Hey everyone, welcome into NBA Now. I'm your host, Harris Rubenstein. The NBA trade deadline is right around the corner. It is so close, we can smell it. So we're gonna go through one player from every single Eastern Conference team that we think could get moved at the deadline. But before we get into that, let's take a look at where we stand right now in the Eastern Conference. One through five, the Bucks taking the pole position right now. Right behind them very closely are the Raptors. Pacers, despite losing Victor Oladipo, come in at third. The 76ers and the Celtics taking up number four and five. After that, we got the Nets, the Heat, and the Hornets making up the rest of the Eastern Conference playoff hunt right now. The Pistons are still in it, though, at 21 and 27. We might be nearing blow it up territory. We are already in blow it up territory for the Wizards. I still am getting over someone asking me yesterday if Anthony Davis could get traded to the Wizards. That is still the funniest thing that anyone has said to me this week. Then the bottom half of the Eastern Conference, the Magic, the Hawks, the Bulls, the Knicks, and of course, the lowly Cavaliers. So let's start at the top. Let's start with the Bucks. Here is a player who I think could get dealt. And perfect timing right as we started this show, according to Jerry Woeful, a longtime Bucks reporter. He says that the Bucks have entered the Anthony Davis sweepstakes, and according to sources, has offered the Pelicans any player on their roster not named Giannis. Eric Bledsoe would absolutely be included in a trade like that, simply because the Pelicans are looking for help at the point guard spot. Bledsoe is not on a big time contract. He can be moved off of it either this year or next, and he would just be a good fit for New Orleans. In fact, I think he'd be a good fit for almost any team that is in need of a point guard, but what the Bucks are looking for, he just isn't bringing to the table. They need someone on the perimeter that can hit threes at an accelerated rate, and he's shooting under 30% from three in a Mike Budenholzer system that is just not going going to fly long term. I know Eric Bledsoe's happy right now. I know that the team seems relatively happy around him, but if the Bucks are really in the Anthony Davis sweepstakes, Eric Bledsoe is definitely going to be a keystone for that trade. Let's talk about Jonas Valanciunas on the Toronto Raptors. Unfortunately, one of the guys who I initially thought was one of the biggest bust that the NBA draft has had in a long time has actually turned himself into quite a good NBA player. The only problem is, as it is with really any center in the modern day NBA, he was born 20 years too late. And now that the Raptors have kind of moved into this very three-point heavy shooting system with Nick Nurse, Valanciunas has seen a big decrease in his minutes this year, a big decrease in his overall statistics. And I wonder if the Raptors look to move him for some shooting, similar to what the Bucks did acquiring Brooke Lopez. Now, obviously, Brooke Lopez's don't just grow on trees, but I think the Raptors would be interested in moving on from a guy with a huge contract who doesn't fit the modern NBA and move him out for a guy who can help them in a big time playoff hunt. Let's talk about the Pacers. You know, this kind of sucks because, you know, everything changed once that Victor Oladipo injury happened. I actually thought that the Pacers were going to make a big time move for Mike Conley, but with Oladipo down now for the rest of the season and likely for the first couple months of next season as well, I just think they're going to make some small incremental changes. I think Corey Joseph is a guy that they could move off of and maybe bring in a younger player at the position, maybe flip him for a pick as well. They definitely need help at point guard. I mean, Corey Joseph and Darren Collison is not what I'd call an elite point guard combo. So I think Corey Joseph could be moved on from simply to get some long-term options in for the Pacers for when Oladipo comes back. Let's talk about Markel Fultz. We've been getting a lot of questions about him recently and what the 76ers are going to do about him. As of right now, it doesn't seem like they are going to trade him away as of right now, but you never really know because we're not really sure, A, where his, you know, what the update is on him right now in terms of when he could come back. How is he going to look? You know, is he practicing or anything? We have no updates on Markel Fultz right now. So he's literally just being Markel Fultz, sitting on the bench, rehabbing. I wonder if the 76ers are just going to give up on him this year and try to make a move for a player that they can legitimately use this year and the seasons beyond. I understand that he was a, you know, the number one overall pick. I understand that they had a lot of eggs in his basket, but they got to get out now and get something for him while he still has some value. Let's talk about Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is officially on the Eastern Conference trade block. Not because I think the Celtics are actually going to move on from him, but if Danny Ainge knows something that we don't, and he knows that Kyrie Irving 
isn't actually going to sign that extension, which by the way, I've said multiple times is a load of crap. He's absolutely going to re-sign with the Celtics. I don't know why this keeps getting brought up by media members who have been notoriously wrong in the past, but if it does end up being true that Kyrie Irving isn't going to sign that max deal, Boston should trade him yesterday. They should have already traded him. There is no reason that Kyrie Irving should be on this team if he's not going to sign a long-term extension. I know the team is hunting for a, a finals this year. I know that they're looking to do that beyond as well. But if Kyrie Irving is not going to sign an extension with this team, they have to get value back for him as soon as possible, especially because it seems as if Anthony Davis is not going to end up in Boston and will likely end up with the Knicks or with the Lakers. But I don't know from you guys, will Kyrie Irving re-sign with the Celtics? I say yes. And frankly, I'm a little bit angry that the national media is trying to stir this up and turn this into a story. This to me is when you can totally see the claws that LeBron James has in the NBA media. He's putting stuff out to Chris Haynes. We have the Ball family pushing stuff to Shams. It is so obvious where everyone is getting all their information. And then you have Chris Haynes yesterday come out saying, people around the league think that it's unlikely that uh, Kyrie Irving is gonna re-sign with the Celtics. So just random people around the league think, yeah, maybe Kyrie is going to leave. And all of a sudden, it's turned into a national story that Kyrie Irving is going to re-sign with the Celtics. We got to do better, people. We got to do better at picking and choosing what stories are actually legitimate and what other stories are just a load of PR crap from Clutch Sports. Kyrie Irving is absolutely going to re-sign with the Celtics unless they completely bottom out and become one of the worst teams in the NBA. He committed to the team at the start of the season. They've built the entire roster around him. And if he doesn't want to re-sign at this point, then good riddance. Because it, I don't know what, I understand he's incredibly talented, but I would not want to give that guy a long-term contract if he's not going to sign one with the Celtics. Give him a two-year deal, sure. But he would now have turned his back on two separate franchises at the top of their game. Not a great look for Kyrie Irving if he doesn't come back to Boston. Let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, I will admit, I was low on the Brooklyn Nets in, ter in terms of their overall win total this year. D'Angelo Russell, who I did say was a dark horse for comeback player of the year this year and most improved player, has been fantastic. But one player who has not been fantastic on the Nets is Alan Crabb. In fact, he has been one of the worst players in the NBA and is somehow a top 20 highest paid player in basketball right now. Could you believe that? I couldn't believe it when I found out that stat. Alan Crabb needs to get traded. Now, trade him to the Hawks, trade him to the Suns, trade him to a team, package him with a pick, and get him the heck out of here. The Nets are in line next offseason to have enough cap space to sign two max free agents. Alan Crabb could be kicked out of town, and they'd have even more money to offer to free agents, which they desperately need to bring in. Alan Crabb should be out, send him to a bad team, flip him for a pick, maybe attach a late, late, late first round pick from 2023 to him to get him off your roster, but they have to get that deal off of their cap. Let's talk about the Miami Heat. Speaking of teams with horrible caps, let's, Hassan Whiteside is a guy who I've talked about a lot in terms of trade rumors and when is he finally going to get moved. Maybe this year will finally be the year that they end up moving off of his contract. This is the third year in a row that they've needed to trade him but simply haven't been able to. I think that Pat Riley, and this is something that I've brought up multiple times before, I think Pat Riley has gone from one of the best GMs in sports to the most overrated executive in sports. He has done nothing, nothing for the Miami Heat the past four seasons to make them anything close to relevant. He's given Kelly Olynyk stupid money. He gave Dion Waiters stupid money. He gave Hassan Whiteside stupid money. Tyler Johnson, the same thing. Josh Richardson, like he just gave all these guys all of this big time money and they all suck. Seriously, name a really good player on the Heat right now. I'll wait. They don't exist. Hassan Whiteside is one of those guys that they have to move on from now if they want any chance of competing next season or any of the seasons onward to get him off the cap. Let's talk about the Charlotte Hornets. Speaking of a team that is just so terrible with cap and management, just abysmal. And Frank Kaminsky is maybe the pinnacle of that concept. One of my favorite all-time NBA what-ifs, or at least great what-ifs of the past decade, what if the Charlotte Hornets accepted the Celtics trade of four first-round picks for the pick that they used to draft Frank Kaminsky? 
So instead of getting four first round picks from the Celtics, four, I am, that is not hyperbole. I'm not making this up. The Celtics offered the Charlotte Hornets four first round picks to move up in the draft to take Justice Winslow. The Hornets turned that down and drafted Frank Kaminsky, who has now become one of the biggest busts that the NBA has had of the past five years. It is time to move on from Frank Kaminsky. It is time for a change of scenery for him as well. Go be the great backup big on a middling NBA team that you're always supposed to be, Frank Kaminsky. I'm there with you. Enjoy Barstool and that weird podcast that you have. Let's talk about Blake Griffin. Now, we here at Chat Sports, we do not lie to you guys. We try to keep everything within an even, uh, how do I, how do I know, an even scope when it comes to looking at NBA news. If you're asking why is Blake Griffin on your screen right now, it is because Blake Griffin is actually very unhappy in Detroit right now and is reportedly, and has put this out to the media, he is unhappy with the direction of the team and may force a trade by the deadline. I love it. That's great. Blake Griffin should absolutely force another trade out of Detroit. He didn't want to be there in the first place. Dwayne Casey was a great pickup. Andre Drummond's a nice player. But after that, there is nobody on this team that is worth a damn. Nobody. Their entire team is bad besides Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond when he actually wants to try once in a blue moon. And if you look at the Pistons record right now, they're 21 and 27. A team that has Blake Griffin and Dwayne Casey should not be 21 and 27. Send him to Portland. Send him somewhere where he can actually be a legitimate threat for a finals contender. But as of right now, this, this Detroit experiment with him and Drummond has been a pretty massive failure so far. So let me know in the comment section below, what would be Blake Griffin's best landing spot? I say Portland. I've always said Portland. I think it'd be fantastic to see him on the Trailblazers with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. If you're looking to make some money on the NBA this year, there's only one place to do it, and that's with BetDSI. Head to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120 for a 120% deposit bonus. By the way, guys, you can use that promo code, get that deposit bonus anyway, and then go put some money down the Super Bowl. You can really use that money for whatever you want. It's free money that BetDSI is giving you guys this year. Again, chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120. Let's talk about the Washington Wizards. So, again, I don't mean to rehash against our, our good friend of the show, Bob. Uh, Bob asked us a great question yesterday on our live episode of, uh, of NBA Now. He asked if the Wizards had a realistic chance of trading for Anthony Davis. Now, that's not going to happen. There is a 0% chance that Anthony Davis ends up on the Wizards. I'm very sorry, Bob. Someone clearly hurt you, whether it was Ernie Grunfeld or Scott Brooks or anyone else under the sun, Randy Whitman. Somebody hurt you, but I'm going to do it now. The Wizards are going to trade Bradley Beal either the deadline or next summer. They can get a great package back for him. It'd be a better idea for them to blow it up than to try to build around him. He's not really that kind of player. And they could ship him out to the Lakers or maybe to the Bucks or even the Celtics for a really nice package of young players and picks. One thing I also want to point out about Bradley Beal, this year with John Wall out, he has put up career highs in points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, and true shooting percentage. He has literally been putting up the best numbers of his career without John Wall. Imagine what Bradley Beal would be able to do on a legitimate franchise surrounded by a LeBron James or a Kyrie Irving or a Giannis Antetokounmpo. Imagine what Bradley Beal could be if you put him on a great team. I am praying to the basketball gods, please listen, please get Bradley Beal traded to a team that's worth our time because watching him waste away on the Wizards is just such a waste of talent. And I know that I'm a little bit hypocritical because I've always been a big proponent of small market teams keeping their stars, but they already chose their star. They gave $200 million to John Wall with two bad knees. They're going to be paying him $40 million the last three years of that deal. Three years, 40 mil for John Wall coming off another knee surgery. Get Bradley Beal on a team that is worth our time and get him the hell away from John Wall. I'm so tired of that combo. Let's talk about the Orlando Magic. We talked about him a bunch of times, and that is Nikola Vucevic, who's having a career year so far, 20 and 12 every single night. His three-point shooting's been a little bit better. He'd be a great piece for a contender. I've said this a couple times. 
I would love to see the Lakers somehow make a couple of trades that would get them both Nikola Vucevic and Bradley Beal. I'm not sure if that's plausible, but if you're trying to make a legitimately good NBA team, if you keep Lonzo Ball, you somehow keep Josh Hart, you trade away Ingram and Kuzma in a couple draft picks, you end up with Bradley Beal, you end up with Vucevic, all of a sudden your lineup is Lonzo, Hart, LeBron, Nikola Vucevic, and a throw in four like a Mo Wagner or Beasley or whoever the hell they want to start that night. I would love to see Vucevic on an actual title contender. I'm just worried that the Magic are going to convince themselves that they can compete this year and aren't going to trade him during an all-star season. But we should see Nikola Vucevic on a new team by the deadline. Let's go to a couple teams who are for sure going to be moving on from a couple of these guys. Let's start with Jeremy Lin with the Atlanta Hawks. He's basically already been traded. I'm not really sure to who yet, but he's probably been the most active bench player in terms of guys who are going to get traded at the deadline. Would be a nice piece for contenders. Been a good player for the Hawks this year, averaging about 11 points per game off the bench. His shooting percentage has been okay this year as well. Not a great three-point shooter, but he's good enough to be a good guy for you off the bench. Can handle the ball, can run an offense, can really do anything you need a backup point guard to do in the NBA. He, to me, Jeremy Lin's the next Raymond Felton. Raymond Felton has somehow been in the NBA now. I'm pretty sure he's like 90 years old. That's going to be Jeremy Lin. He's just, you know, like a J.J. Beret or something. He's just going to be in the NBA for a long, long time because he's just so consistent as a backup player. So I hope Lin ends up on a good team. I'd love to see him raise a, uh, an, NBA tro uh, an NBA title someday. Let's go to the Bulls. Jabari Parker, I've talked about him a bunch as well. His contract is so bad. I remember when uh, we were live when Jabari Parker got his ridiculous two-year, $40 million contract from the Chicago Bulls with a player option of 20 mil in year two. I have no idea why they gave him that much money. I have no idea. He was not good with Milwaukee. He was coming off another you know, serious injury. I mean, good for Jabari Parker. Not get the bag, my man. It's just really, really strange that he, they ended up giving him that much money and it also will likely be what keeps them from moving him if that ends up coming to it but I think Jabari Parker will end up getting moved maybe it's to this team the New York Knicks who we've actually talked a lot about in terms of Ennis Kanter and moving on from him he still has a ton of value the dude averages 14 and 11 a night I know he isn't great on the defensive side of the board but look there is still value for offensive minded big men hell Two of the best players in the, game, in the NBA right now, three of the best players in the NBA right now are offensive-minded big men. Two of them being Nikola Jokic and Carl Anthony Towns. Cantor obviously isn't that good, but he could be a great player to come off the bench for a contender. I remember those couple years that he was with the Thunder. He was a huge liability on the court just because he wasn't good enough as a scorer. But he's improved. His shot has gone up. His true shooting percentage has improved this year as well. So I'd like to see what Cantor can do on a really good team. It is a shame, though, that New York is trading him. He's talked multiple times about how much he loves the city and how much he appreciates the franchise standing behind him. And he's he's gone through a lot of issues the past couple years, especially with his buddies over there in his home country of Turkey. Let me know in the comment section below, who will the Knicks trade away at the deadline? Could be Tim Hardaway Jr., could be Courtney Lee, could be Anis Kander, could be a lot of different players. Let me know in the comment section below who you guys think they are going to move on from. Last, but certainly not least, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kevin Love is a guy who I've been screaming needs to be traded since LeBron, since, excuse me, since LeBron James left for the Lakers back in July. I've been screaming that they needed to trade Kevin Love, and instead of trading him, oh no, they, oh, you know, smart, uh, smart, smart, you know, Dave Griffin with the Cavs, instead of trading him away, they gave him a five-year, $120 million contract. To a 30-year-old who hasn't played a fully healthy season in five years. You are a joke of a franchise, Cavs. I cannot believe that people like still try to convince themselves that Dan Gilbert is a good owner. The dude has run the best player of all time out of town twice. Has given more bad money to more bad players than I think of any other team in the NBA besides the Phoenix Suns. And now here we are with Kevin Love. He has played two games this season and they gave him a five-year, $120 million contract. They need to Blake Griffin him and trade him out of town because if they keep that contract on the books for years to come, 
they are going to be a bigger joke than they already are. Remember when we started the season and the Cavs thought that they were going to make the playoffs? Do you remember that? I remember when the Cavs were like, yeah, we think we're a playoff team. We're going to compete this year. You guys are the worst record in basketball and are an embarrassment to the sport right now. Trade Kevin Love, get a new owner. And also, while you're at it, go to BetDSI. Head to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120 to get a 120% deposit bonus on any of your deposit today. The Super Bowl is just days away, and there is no better time to make some money this time of year than with BetDSI.